Hello. Hey. hey How hey, are hey. you? I'm doing great. And yourself? I'm good. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday for real. For real. It's Saturday already. Wow. I know. How's everything? You're in LA, right? Yes, ma'am. How's everything in LA? It's cool. We're still on, you know, kind of locked down because <clears throat> of, you know, coronavirus. But, but that's, that's everywhere. That's like here in New York, but it's a little bit of freedom, but still right. locked down. Right, right, right. Yeah, same. And we could eat outside and stuff like that. So it's cool. At least it's, at least it's like hot year round because when it gets cold here, we can't even eat outside anymore. So it's like, <laughs> it's going to be. That's good. So yeah, I'm, I'm from New York and I can't stand New York anymore. Why? I don't know. It's just, it's just too crowded for me. Really? How and long have you been in LA? September's gonna make it three years now. Oh, okay, so, so you're claiming LA, even though New York's your home, you like LA more? No, 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 no. no. New York is New York is my home. That's always gonna be my home. I'm always gonna respect okay. New York. You know what I'm saying? But it's like I like LA. Like I just like the landscape. And just the weather ten times more. Like, I, you can't I, get compare that. I get that. Well, any type of place that's warm year round is better than the snow. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah. a snow person, so I get that. And then it's just like the subway and like Manhattan is just like it's just filthy there. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad, but okay. I'm from there. And I, I I'm from there so I can talk about it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah, people, okay, so. I'll give you that. Because if you weren't yeah. from New York, it would be like, okay, come on now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm not just, you know, like outside of talking about it. Okay. But, um, like, how have you been overall? Because this year has been, it's been a lot, like, with COVID and just all the other stuff that's been happening culturally. How, how have you been taking it? You know, I've, I've been, I've been way more productive in quarantine. You know, Bubba, chill out. Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> I've been way more productive during quarantine than I was outside of quarantine, you know? I feel like, you know, when this coronavirus, you know, pandemic happened, like, I really, you know, went back to the drawing board with my team and, you know, we started, you know, developing a lot of things. So I think I think it was, for me, it was, it was a blessing in disguise, you know, because I, I choose to see it from like an optimistic point of view. And sometimes, you know, you could be, if you if you have a pessimistic outlook on life, some people are looking at it like the world is over, you know, and that the world is never going to, you know, come back from this. But there's always, if you study history, there's always something of this caliber that happens, you know what I'm saying? And okay. those, you know, think positive, you know, you think yourself out of the situation or you, when the situation is over with, you have an advantage because during the dark ages, you know, during the pandemic, you were planning, you know, so it was... Yeah. It definitely had its downfalls, though. I mean, it was it was a lot of like crazy moments, you know. And I feel bad for a lot of people, you know, because you know they they weren't that fortunate, mm -hmm. you know. So it was definitely sad. I knew a few people who got it. Thank God that none of them died, you know. So, but yeah, yeah. One of my friends, she ended up catching it, and it was mild, thank God. But this happens, like you said, like maybe once every hundred years, right? We get hit with a pandemic. But, someone, someone wanted me to pick the dog up, so I'm just gonna pick the dog up. Oh my god, that's so adorable! What's your dog's name? His name is Bubba. Oh, Bubba is so adorable. Hi, <laughs> <Hey>, Bubba. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was gonna. So you just dropped your first official single, "Bet on You," right? Yeah. So, what was the inspiration, and why? Why did you choose now to do all this? Why did I? Huh? Why did you what? choose now to drop your first single? Oh, I think, you know, after talking with my team, we were talking about this like for a while. I mean, uh, this, yeah, this this process, it was a long process because I was going back and forth about a lot of stuff. But, you know, my team, we felt like it was just the right time. And then, you know, I started doing a TikTok thing during when quarantine kind of started. And then, you know, I gained like a little following on that. And it was, he was like, look, look at your demographic and stuff like that. Mm -hmm do something that, you know, maybe they can all partake in. And, and you know, and I was like, you know what? That's a dope idea. So me and Just B, who's featuring on it, you know, we got together and it was like, hey, let's, you know, came up with the idea and the concept. And then uh, the, the, no, I came up with the concept. The concept was just like, basically just in the, in the story, in the song, it's basically just talking about how 
I basically bet it on myself and just got out the streets. You know what I'm saying? And then the mm -hmm. chorus, kick, kick, whoop, whip, is something that everybody can just, you know, dance to. But, like, the chorus is, like, symbolic to me, just, like, kicking and fighting my way out the streets. But I just made it in a fun way that, you know, my demographic could resonate with, you know? All right, so before we dive deep into the song, who came up with the TikTok challenge? Did you come up with the dance for it or did one of your followers on TikTok come up with the dance? No, we, we actually came up with the dance, but, you know, like, the, it, you have your own plan and then God has his plan, you know what I'm saying? So that somebody came up with this dope, this girl came up with this dope dance. Um, I can't think of their name right now, but shout out to them and, like, they started killing it. And I was like, oh, wow. I was like, this is this is better than what we thought about. <laughs> like, you know, and they, they did that. And I was like, oh, wow. So then now a bunch of people are going to start doing it. And I don't know, we might have to, you know, give a reward for like the top five best, you know, dancing challenges, whatever. So I was listening to the song. I think it's the third voice. The voice. It's the third verse when you were talking about um, when you were 11 and your, your cousin got murdered and you just had to like having to like understand why someone would do that what was like your perception of the world before that event took place and then how did that change after i mean I, so where, where i grew up because I'm, I'm from brooklyn flatbush and then we also then moved to jersey then we, we moved to jersey and it was a uh, orange east orange area Crime was just inevitable. It was there, you know? And it's like Marcus Aurelius said, you know, poverty is the mother of all crime. So we were used to this, you know? But, and I was used to hearing people dying at like a young age, you know? But it's just like, then when it hit home, it kind of was, it hit different. Cause then it was just like, oh, wow. Like, this is like crazy. But I couldn't wrap my head around it. Like, cause my mother was like screaming and crying that morning, like just yelling. And I was just like, wait, what happened? And my brother told me, and I was just like, wait, what? I was like, I like, I couldn't really like grasp it. And then he was like, yeah, he's, and I was just like shocked, like, damn, like, this is crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's really like ruthless out here. And they just taking lives for just, you know, no reason, you know? And there was different speculations on why it happened, but nobody knew the truth. And from that point on, I was just like, the streets is just a fucked up game, you know, excuse my language, but I was just like, I gotta, like, this, this is this is not it, you know, but it's like, I didn't have a choice. So after that, I kept getting in trouble, kept getting in trouble. And at 13, my father was just like, my father took me and my other brother, we were the two youngest, and took us to Florida. And then that's when my life just completely changed. I was in a predominantly white area. I caught a court case and my father almost killed me. So I was just like, you know what? Look like I'm not gonna get in trouble anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, honestly, what saved me was just me fearing getting in trouble by my father. Because of the horror stories my brothers used to tell me uh, growing up, they was like, are you lucky you didn't live with dad? And I was just like, what you mean? Like, he was like, you lucky you didn't grow up with him because you would have, because I didn't, I didn't grow up with him until 13 I started living with him. So I didn't know what they were talking about. So it was basically like a scared straight type of thing. Yeah. Uh, so, um, acting, um, I saw that you got introduced to acting while you were in college. Yeah, I, I took it as an elective, just just something for fun. And I was just interested, at the time, I was just, what was I interested in? I was doing like an AAU ball, because I came to college at like 17 years old. So I was really young, and I was smaller, and I was like, you know, let me try to win basketball. So I was focused on basketball and stuff like that. And I was like, let me take acting as an elective. And mm -hmm. I did. And I remember my acting teacher was like, after final exam day, he was like, yeah, you should really pursue this. And I was like, nah, you know, don't gas me or whatever. And I just went about my life. But then different things started happening. I was like, you know what, maybe I should try this entertainment. Well, how did you explain that to your parents? Because I know you're Haitian American. And I have Haitian American friends. And going into arts in a Haitian American household. Oh, my right God. <laughs> so yeah, how did you explain that? Oh, that's a no-no right there. Um, I didn't explain it. That's okay. the thing. Like, I, it's like, I realized, it's like, 
people people are gonna doubt what you say but believe what you do you mm -hmm. know like i actually speak loud in words all the all the time so it's just like i told my father that i was like 18 19 i was like hey dad i'm quitting college i'm done with college i'm just gonna go back up north and i got some stuff i gotta do and he's like what <laughs> he's like what he's like, what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> That's what he said. And then and then he's talking and then he starts talking to my brothers. And um my brother David was telling me that my father was like, Ah, Abraham is crazy. That's my first name, Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he was like, he was like, he's crazy. I don't know what he's doing. Cause I was I was getting good grades. Like I had a bright future in anything that I could anything I put my hands on, I would have went far in there. Because mm -hmm. my goal was going to the military. I was gonna go in the Air Force, then come out the Air Force and join the police academy. I was a criminal justice major. You know what I'm saying? And that just going that route, right? And uh, it's just the books and my, my relationship with God at the time, he, he just he was just leading me to just go way far from that verbial route. So I was like, you know what, I'm about to just try this. So anyway, I didn't say nothing to him. And then I go up north. I didn't really say much to my mom either. But my mom was supportive, but she was the kind of supportive that when things was getting tough, she was just like, you know, why don't you just go back to school? And you know, you was a really smart kid. You know, you're, you're a cute kid. You can get a nice little job, and and da, 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 da. I was like, no, ma. I'm like, nah. You don't. You just don't get it. And it was it was a point that everyone was just looking at me like I was just crazy. They was just like, all right, when is it gonna happen? <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, I just I just kept persisting, and then the minute I hit on TV, that my my parents was like, hey, what? And my dad, my dad, <laughs> he was so happy, man. It was. I've never seen my father this happy before in my life. <laughs> you know, the first time I was on TV, I was like, damn, he could smile for that long? <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was amazing. It's, it's amazing to just see the, just to, to give them that. For them, it was like a, watching like a Cinderella Disney story. Mm -hmm. It's like, wow, like dreams do come true, you know, type thing. So I think it's, you know, it's amazing that, you know, I, I had the ability to just make people believers again, you know? So, speaking of when you were talking about you were reading a lot of books, I read that one of the books you were reading was The Alchemist, right? Yeah. So how did you get introduced to that book? The Alchemist, Will Smith. He he recommended it in an interview, not in person. I okay. wish I was talking. I wish I was talking to Will. He was like, you know what, Da Vinci? Uh, yeah. Uh, read The Alchemist. I would have been amazing. I would have been happy as hell. But no. Nah, um. Uh, yeah. He recommended it in an interview, and then my brother read it because me and my brother like my brother David my older brother he's the second oldest he was reading a lot because you know his he gravitated towards the streets you know doing what you do in the streets selling crack all that stuff and you know he was studying pop I was studying his pop with him and we realized when he was in jail like he was a reader he just kept reading 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 and that's where he's just like you know a light bulb went off and then I read this thing that was like you want to hide something from a black man you put it in the book so I was like, all right, I'm about to find out what's in these books. So I just started tackling the books. I read it, and it was just so dope. And that, that boy, Santiago, in the story, like, he's everybody. Everybody who's pursuing their dream, you're yeah. Santiago, basically, you know? And there was this quote in the book that was like, when something is really for you, the entire universe conspires into helping you achieve that goal. And, man, I, I literally watched from, like, it's like the birds to the bees to the ants. That's just leading me like, yo, go this way. Even when I want to stop and quit, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's crazy. Just the the way the world just influenced me to just go in this direction, you know? So that's why I was like, maybe this is for me. Yeah, that's one of my favorite books because I think I had to read in the 10th grade and that's one of my favorite books ever, even though I was kind of- Hey, crazy. Brett, shout out to my boy, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, do you feel like you're walking in your purpose? Absolutely. Why do you say that? Let me try to say this without getting too deep. You can get deep. <laughs> mm, no, because sometimes... You never know. It might inspire somebody watching, so you should get deep. That's that's No, that's, that's true, but... How do I feel I'm walking in my purpose? Huh? I definitely... I. I just know. When you know, you know. There's mm -hmm. certain things you can't take, say too soon, you know? And, I, and, and that's kind of how I am. Like, when I was pursuing my, my dreams, I didn't tell no one. 
because it's just like your dreams that that's something personal you know that's like that's like an infant when the baby first come out you don't make everybody hold it you don't tell everybody about it you don't put it around you know you keep it isolated you know what i'm saying until the baby's the bones get stronger the immune system of the child gets strong you know what i'm saying so the child is strong enough to fight the world but sometimes when something is too premature you know you don't want to share and expose it to the world too soon because then you know it could you, you can invite energies uh, towards it that's not conducive to what you're trying to do. So it's like, and then instead of me like going in depth and explaining why I'm walking on my purpose, I'll just let, you know, my actions show it. But I'm definitely like- Walking your purpose. 100%. You, when you know, you know. <laughs> because it's like, when it gets tough, even though as much as I want to quit sometimes, it's like, I can't because I know this is bigger than me. Mm -hmm. It's like the way other people is going to be affected by this, other my family and generations that come out of me and other people in the world, you know what I'm saying? That's how I'm like, yo, this is bigger than me. Does that feel like super heavy sometimes when you Absolutely. think about it? So Absolutely. like, so how do you handle that? Because I know that can weigh on some people's mental, and some people can't mentally aren't mentally strong enough to handle something like that. Like, so how do you keep yourself mentally strong to handle that? I, I, I have a great team, like, shout out to my manager, Derek, um, my boy, Brandon, and my sister, Amy, and my agents, and everyone, like, they're, they're dope, and it's just, like, the, the core of who we are is, like, rooted in just spirituality <clears throat> and, like, respect, and so we're all just grounded and humble and hold each other accountable, and the thing is, there's no one in my team that allows me to just do whatever and think like I'm invincible and untouchable. And sometimes it's like, some people have a whole bunch of yes men in their camps. Mm -hmm. So it like, it messes with their perception of like reality. So it's like all the pressures and stuff like that, it gets to them. But when you have a good team, they help you hold that weight. So you're not carrying it on your own. You know what I'm saying? So you can be like, yo, look, you grab that corner, you grab that corner, I'm gonna grab here and that. And although Da Vinci gets all the credit, whether it's good or bad, I know it's not Da Vinci. It's like, it's my team, you know? So that's, we just put God first and just stay humble and remember that this has nothing to do with me. Because honestly speaking, if anyone else was in my position, they would get the same treatment as me. So it's not me, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's what comes with this position. So it's like, whoever you tested against for a role or whatever, if they get the role, they would get the same treatment. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, you just gotta understand that. And I just like, you know what? This is, I, I try not to take all the little, the hype that come with it. Cause that, the pressures that come with that, it could I, it could really fuck some people up. I don't know if I can curse, ooh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Mess some people up. <laughs> so I know you picked uh, the name Da Vinci because you're like a, you consider yourself a renaissance man yeah. but out of everyone in the renaissance like Harlem renaissance and the renaissance back in great enlightenment why did you pick da vinci so da vinci is my adopted middle name that's what the d stands for in abraham d Justy. um okay so the chi at the end of da vinci c-h-i is energy it stands for energy so it's just like and the, the, the name is just, it flows so well. And then the ending being spelled like energy, it's just, I want people to feel the, the renaissance energy in me. And that's like, you know, I'm not just a, a one trick pony, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times in this business, people try to just pigeon you hold down to just acting. Or if, if they see you as one thing, they just can't unsee you as something else. So I just, I chose them. And his story was just dope, you know, he's a painter, he's a mathematician, he was a biologist, he just did, he did everything, you know what I'm saying? So I was just like, architect, and I was like, you know what? I like it, it's dope, I rock with it. I had my own twist to the end of it. So I was like, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so because like your fans are blowing up the question thing, I'm going to pull like questions from your fans. Um, let's start with this one. So what advice would you give those who want to follow their dreams but are too scared to? Um, 
<clears throat> Honestly, <clears throat> on the other side of fear, it's like the greatest things that you never knew was possible, you know? And you only have one life to live. And honestly, just think what's the worst that can happen? Like really, what what is the worst that can happen? You know, and that's the mentality that I adopted. And I was like, I'm just gonna go for it. You know, I, I'm gonna go for it. If you really feel it in you strongly, and passionately, you know, have a plan and then just, just go for it. Just go for it. But have have faith. And definitely, definitely uh <clears throat> you need to have some type of spirituality because when it gets tough, you need someone to cry to. <laughs> like, yeah, but that's what I would say. Go for it. You only have one life to live and you you never know, like you could have something that the world really needs because of your fear is just is it's holding it back. Speaking of fear, like I read that you the way you really jumped into the acting thing was like after a chance encounter with Lil Mama and she told you to come out to LA and meet her manager or something. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, where is that at? It's like, uh, you gotta Google that. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, me and, yeah, so me and Lil Mama, we're like, shout out to that team. We're like brothers and sisters basically, you know? And um, yeah, she was like, yo, you're mad talented, da 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 came to LA and then met her theatrical manager and it was just like, things just started rolling. You know, it was just like the right place at the right time kind of thing. I paid my dues, you know what I'm saying? I served my prison sentence. <laughs> and everyone got to pay their dues and it's gonna be like a prison sentence. So it's like, yeah, you, the God is gonna test you some way. But if you survive that test, then the rest is just like, you know, history. But some people test as longer than others. Yours might be three years, five years, so it might be 10, 15, 20 years. So. All right, let's pull another one from your fans. Um, let's see. All right, what's the most occurring thing that you would like to tell your fans? The most occurring thing? So like, I guess what are you working on or just coming out really soon that you want to tell your fans about? I guess the song is out already. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's the song. Uh, we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna definitely like post something about like it's gonna be a real challenge coming soon, and then like the first, second, third, fourth, fifth place, you're definitely gonna get a reward. Some is cash. Some we might just fly out to meet me and some other people or whatever. So that's definitely gonna be like the next thing. That's gonna be really fun to do. So are you working on an EP now too, or? I'm, the, I'm, work, I'm working. I'm working on another single mm -hmm. right now, and it's like a, a Spanish joint. So uh, doing that. Um, so and then probably next to the EP. The EP. Yeah. So how? Now I know like entertainment when it comes to like the acting world and the music industry, two different worlds. Um, mm -hmm. How? How do you feel the music industry entering that is going to differ for you? The music how industry is sloppy. <laughs> like, it's sloppy as hell. There's no order. Like, it's like the wild, wild west. Like, okay. acting is, is so, like, you know what you're doing. Like, it's like, it's, it's a way that it works. It's a process, and it's, it's consistent. But the music is just like, it, it just makes no sense. It makes no <laughs> sense. And it's just like, the the music industry is ratchet, and then it's like <laughs> the acting industry is is organized as hell. I'm I had to compare it to it. <laughs> like it's just like it's not. It is. I was like, yo, what the hell? It's just all over the place, you know. Well, yeah, because there's no like real blueprint. It's just. It's not. <laughs> yeah, it's just like it's it's no, it's no order. Like there's no one way to just like. Make it like, as, I, as I'm learning about it now, I'm just like, yo, this is just like, I'm like, dang, this is why these artists are probably crazy as hell. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I'm playing, I'm playing. Uh, no, I'm no, no, no. I, I will say, because uh, I work in the music industry and it's, it's, it's ever changing and you have to always evolve. And that's why yeah. when you talk to actors, if you notice, actors are more like the humble, reserved ones, you know what I'm saying? We don't got too many chains on and we not, you know, leaned out and just, you know, saying, just, 
you know, and then the musicians, you you can spot a rapper from miles away, boy. <laughs> because it's yeah, talk about what what you call it doing your prison prison sentence. Talk about some of them having done prison sentences to get to just be getting their name out there, or yeah, at least right. a play on a radio station like that's right. hell in itself. <laughs> right. Um. Hmm. Okay. What's the best advice you have for getting yourself motivated? Usually when, I, when I'm like super down and going through one of those storms, I just think about my family, my friends, and just the people that I'm doing it for. You know, I, just, I pray, meditate, and I'll probably listen to a sermon, talk to my manager, and then boom, I'm back up on my feet. Um, so I was reading the comments from what some of your fans. <laughs> they are in love with you. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Someone so said DaVinci is the, the, the looks like the type of dude that I have an OnlyFans. <laughs> oh, we. <laughs> Yo. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, are you going to have a bigger part in All American Season 3? So I, want to I mean, I can't. You can't reveal that. Yeah, you guys got to watch. <laughs> <laughs> and hold on, I'm going to pull one more from one of your fans. Mm. Oh, OK. So did you ever imagine being the person that you are today? Hmm. When I would have wild ass thoughts sometimes, I would think like, maybe one day, like, what if I was in this position? That would be crazy. But then I snapped right out of it. But then at 17, when I decided, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this serious. I saw all this happening. So at, at that point, I definitely um, saw it happening. So it was like you basically spoke it into existence. Yeah. OK. Like fairy tales and dreams, stuff like that do come true. But now the thing about it, though, what I realized is that Dreams are always better when there's a figment of your imagination. Because in your imagination, you only see the pros and not the cons. Mm -hmm. So when I used to think about this, it would be, it was, it was way more like blissful than it, what it actually is now. Like now that I'm here, I'm just like, damn, I didn't think about the pressure that come with this shit. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't think about how like, it's like, damn, there's certain things I can't do anymore. Yeah. You know? And I was just like, oh wow, like this is a lot of, you know, Pressure, and you don't think that. You only think about the fun stuff. So, yeah. So what's your end goal with everything? Like, let's say you, after years of being in this industry, you get all your accolades and this and the other. Like, what's, what do you hope to, what's one of the things you hope to accomplish, even outside of industry, the entertainment industry? I just want to leave an impact on the world, a positive impact, and just tell a different narrative uh, about the Black man. Okay. How I'm going to do that, you guys are going to see. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for talking with us today. Thanks for having me. Us. No problem. And is there anything else you want to tell your fans before we leave? Um, nah, I appreciate all you guys, though, for supporting the song, though. Um, I really appreciate that. And you guys are growing with me. It's dope. And, um... I look forward to just building with you guys a song, two, three, four, five, six, and, you know. All right. Well, thank you, and have a good day. All right. You do the same. Nice talking to you, Dimitri. All right. Bye. Bye. Where is the buzz you said was mine? Where is the buzz? Ooh.